Gunsmoke. Brought to you by Chesterfield. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed thanks to Accuray. They satisfy the most. Around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gun Smoke, starring William Conrad, the transcribed story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal. The first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. <laughs> into the office if you got time, Kitty. I better not, Matt. It's late. But, uh, thanks for the supper. <laughs> it's my pleasure. That yeah, looks like you're going to have a busy night tonight, huh? Mm-hmm. Front Street's filling up fast. Yeah, it'll be busy, all right. Two trail herds came in today from Texas. That's yeah, money, Kitty. Mm. Those boys will leave everything they got here. <laughs> they sure go through a lot of misery for the sake of a few nights howl and dodge, don't they? <laughs> well, I'd better go start making it worth their while. Say, isn't that Doc's buggy? Huh? Oh, yeah, it is. You know, what's that on the seat with him? Looks like a body wrapped in a blanket. Yeah, it sure does. And yeah, maybe you don't want to see this, Kitty. No, I'll stay here. Oh, well, hello, Matt. Who's that, Doc? Well, he, he must have been a buffalo hunter. I found him on the south bank of the Pawnee near Turkey Bend. He had a camp there, or he did, until somebody came along and shot him. You mean he was alone? There was another camp a few miles downriver, but this man was alone. How did you stop by the other camp? I figured that would be your job, man. Bringing him in was bad enough. Now, what do you mean? Whoever shot him took his head for a souvenir. What? Not a very nice killing, is it, man? I'll ride up there tomorrow, Doc. It don't look like nobody much is around, Mr. Jones. Yeah, there's a man coming out of the wagon now. What? Well, now, there is the one longest, skinniest buffalo hunter i ever seen. He looks like a plucked crow. Well, he isn't very handsome, is he? Mm-hmm. Well, there's must be out hunting. Huh? Hello. Where's the rest of your outfit? There ain't but three of us. Not counting the woman. Oh, you got a woman out here? Abby. She belongs to... Ben Seipel. Now, what's your name? I'm Earl Tix, but I ain't sure I care to do any more talking. You'll talk, and you can start by telling me if you know anything about the hunter who was camped a couple of miles upriver from here. I don't know nothing about nobody, mister. That man was killed, Tix. He was shot, and somebody ran off with his head. Oh, he done that, huh? My name's Dylan Tix. I'm a U.S. Marshal. Don't turn around, mister. In the wagon behind you, Mr. Dillon. He's holding a sharp 50. It'll shoot, too. It'll make an awful big hole in a man. Now you just stand steady. Get the gun sticks. Sure. It's better. You can turn around now. 
Ben Seifel, huh? I'm an alligator, mister. I can treat people terrible. Like cutting their heads off? Ain't nobody gonna come into my camp and start saying murder. Not to Ben Seifel, they ain't. If you didn't do it, you got no cause to worry, Seifel. <laughs> I got no cause to worry. You standing there with a big 50 aimed at your belly. <laughs> he ain't no marshal anyway. Now, you look here. You two stop acting so crazy. Didn't you never hear of Marshal Dillon? There's no sign on him. Where's his badge? I don't happen to be wearing a badge, Tix. Go carve some thong out of one of them hides, Tix, and put it to soap. We'll tie these two up for the night. Tie them up? Do what I tell you, Tix. Sure. Hello, Abby. What's going on, Ben? You get the wash done? Yeah. I strung it in the brush to dry. Then get to cooking supper. I'm hungry. We feeding them, too? No, we ain't feeding them. Well, then what are they doing here? They come talking to murder. I feel like shooting them for it. No, Ben. I kill them. I make you watch, Abby. Ben, someday somebody's going to kill you. They got to. <clears throat> You cook a good supper, Abby. I'm real hungry. Introducing one of the country's best-known jazz musicians and arrangers, Mr. Bobby Haggard. How about whistling along with him? Packs more pleasure, packs more pleasure. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed by Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. <laughs> Hardly move, Mr. Dillon. Uh, Tex is pretty handy at tying people up. Yeah, but it ain't him bothering me as much as Ben Seiple. That man is crazy. I'd known how crazy I'd have taken my chances when he first started talking. Yeah, we're in a bad spot here, Chester. Maybe Abby can do something. She sure hates him. Yeah, I know. Now, she's been looking over this way. Hey, wait a minute. She's leaving the fire now. I hope we don't see her. Look, she's coming here, Mr. Dillon. Yeah. You must be right hungry. It's not food we need, Abby. I know. But if I cut you loose, he'd kill me. We wouldn't go off and leave you to face him. You wouldn't. Abby, all men aren't like Ben Seifel and Earl Tix. He can trust me and Chester here. You're really a marshal? I am. I'll do it, Marshal. When he's asleep, I'll do it. I knew she would. I told you. Abby! He's seen me. Stay there, Abby. <laughs> now, what you been talking about, Abby? You been making plans, maybe? No. I was on my way to the river. I wasn't talking. You wasn't, eh? Well, I think I'll go to the river with you. No. Walk ahead of me, Abby. What kind of a man are you, Seifel? You take it out on me if you have to, but not her. I'll take it out on both of you. <coughs> you dirty dog, Seifel. Oh, shut up. 
Get going, Ed. Mr. Dillon, you hurt? Mr. Dillon? No, I, I, I'll be all right, Chester. Oh, that man's got a big foot. Kick a man in the face that way? He ought to be hung. I'll hang him myself if we ever get out of this. It don't look too good for us, does it? No, not now. That poor Abby, what does she stay with a man like him for? Yeah, maybe she's never had a chance to get away. It'd be a miserable enough life without being tied to a murderer. Be quiet, Chester. Here comes Earl Tix. Where's he been all this time? I don't know, but he's moving pretty fast. And what's the rifle for? Where's rifle? Tell me where he went. What's the trouble, Tix? Where is he? He went down to the river. What for? Rifle! Go ahead, Rifle! I'm coming. You better hurry. We got to get out of here. What? What are you yelling about, Tix? We got to get going, Saipo, right now. Get going? What for? Engines. I heard them out there yapping at each other like cows. You sure? I know engines when I hear them. We can't get out of here with that wagon, Tix. You ain't fighting no engines over a wagon. Where's the woman? Never mind her. Let's get our horses and ride. Ooh, what about these two? Leave them for the engines. And their horses, too? I ain't no horse thief. Come on. Them engines will be coming soon. Funny how a man gets to thinking things, ain't it? Oh, like what, Chester? Well, like how I'd like to see one of them circuses before I die. Huh? A circus? Oh, I, I spend an awful lot of time thinking about that. Wondering what lions and tigers and stuff like that looks like. Quiet. I guess Tex was right. I just hope they see we're tied up and helpless before they start planting arrows in us. Look over there. Just beyond the wagon. He's got a rifle. He's signaling with it. Yeah, there are four more, too. Five. Look, he's signaling them others to stay back. Fierce looking, ain't he? Steady now. No more talking. No, I understand. You hunt buffalo? Mr. Dillon. Buffalo hunter gone. Leave us like this. Leave you for pony to kill? Hmm, why? We big enemies. You no hunt buffalo? No. We kill buffalo hunter. Pony. Teach white man. Leave buffalo to pony. Cut off whole head. Why, they killed that man. Wait a minute, Chester. Listen. Buffalo hunter want you kill us. Buffalo hunter gone. You know, catch now. You let us go, we find buffalo hunter. Big enemy. We take care of buffalo hunter for you. Where's he going? Uh, he's going to have a talk with the others, I guess. That was awful smart of you, Mr. Dillon. Maybe, if it works. It makes sense. Well, it does to us, Chester. I just hope it will to them. Looks like they've decided. Well, at least it didn't take them long. Oh, here he comes. He's got his knife out. Oh. He's doing it. He's cutting us loose. Yeah. Oh, yes. It worked. It worked. But he cut us loose and never said a word. What difference does it make, Chester? We're free. Ah, there they 
go. Oh, my, it feels good to stand up, don't it? Yeah, it sure does, Chester. Look, they ain't even taking our horses. Well, I guess they figure we can't chase buffalo hunters on foot. What's that? Marshal. Oh, that's Abby. Yonder she is laying in them weeds. Marshal. Oh, she looks terrible. Well, at least he didn't kill her. You hurt bad, Abby. He hit me. He hit me something awful. Chester, go hitch our horses to that wagon. Yes, sir. Marshal. No, it's all right, Abby. We're going to take you to Dodge. And nobody's ever going to hit you again. I promise you that. Listening to Gunsmoke. In your kitchen, getting ready for Sunday supper, maybe in your living room, relaxing, or out driving. Say, be sure and watch the road, but remember there's pleasure ahead when you smoke Chesterfield, when you satisfy yourself with Chesterfield's better taste and mildness. It stands to reason a cigarette made better and packed better smokes better tastes better, and Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture, so Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips, mild, yet deeply satisfying. Yes, Chesterfield gives you something no other cigarette can give you. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. To the touch, to the taste, Chesterfield packs more pleasure because it's more perfectly packed. By Chesterfield, mild, yet they satisfy the most. Come in, Doc. Uh, my, 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 hot today, isn't it? Is that what you came to tell me? No, I came to tell you nothing. Oh, except I ran into Kitty down at the depot. She and Abby were watching the Santa Fe come in. Uh huh. <laughs> they said they might come by and say hello on their way back. Ah, uh, good. <laughs> oh, my, that Abby's looking better every day, isn't she? Well, between you and Kitty, she's been getting some pretty good care. Yeah, she deserves it. You know, she's already talking about finding a job. I know, Matt. I think she's going to be real happy. Oh, that's Kitty. Matt, Matt, hurry. Kitty, what's the matter? It's that man, that Ben Siple. Siples and Doc? Yeah. He came up to Abby and grabbed her by the arm and dragged her off toward his wagon. Huh? Just to saw it, too. He thought he'd better stay nearby while I went for you. Where are they now? Across the street there, by that wagon. Now, oh. You wait here, Kitty. Don't let him hurt her anymore, Matt. Just been talking to her so far, Mr. Dillon. Has he seen you, Chester? No, sir, and neither is Earl Tix. Oh. And they're, in, and they're in for a big surprise. You keep an eye on Tix, huh? Yes, sir, I will. What are you telling me lies for, Abby? You want another beaten? No! That's enough, Sybil. But she wasn't lying. You really are a marshal, huh? Abby? Yes? You can go with Sipel if you want. But if you don't want to, he'll have to kill me first, and I don't think he can do it. What are you saying? This ain't no business of the law. Shut up. You make your choice, Abby. Kitty's waiting for me. Come back here, Abby. Keep your hands off me. Siple, you broke a promise I made to her. What? 
I told her nobody had ever hit her again. You interfering with my right to beat her when I want? Yeah. You're talking awful big, Marshal. Has everybody always been afraid of you, Sable? They have. And for good reason. And you're about to lose that reputation, Sable. For good... <laughs> Tex, come here. No. Get moving like you tell me. No. You, you can't beat me, Marshal. You wasn't me done nothing. Chester will help you throw Sipel under the wagon. Then you drive him out of Dodge, and you keep on driving, Tex. Oh, I will. I don't mean for a few days. I mean for weeks. You're through on the prairie, Tex. You and Sipel both. So say goodbye to this land. If I see you on it again, you'll rot. Our star, William Conrad. Chesterfield packs more pleasure because Chesterfield's more perfectly packed. A cigarette made better and packed better smokes better, tastes better. And Chesterfield is more perfectly packed by Accuray. This electronic miracle removes human error in cigarette manufacture. So Accuray Chesterfield is firm and pleasing to the lips. Chesterfield. Mild, yet they satisfy the most. You know, during the frontier cattle-sheep wars, men used the expression rimrock, meaning to run down or kill. Well, next week, a man tries to rimrock somebody and dies for his trouble. And that was the West. Good night. Gunsmoke. Produced and directed by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. Our story was specially written for Gunsmoke by John Meston, with music composed and conducted by Rex Corey. Sound patterns by Tom Hanley and Bill James. Featured in the cast were Vic Perrin, John Daner, Helen Klebe, and Lawrence Dobkin. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Live modern. Change to L&M. Yes, have an L&M. No other cigarette you can buy, plain or filter, gives you the full, exciting flavor you get through the pure white L&M Miracle Tip. Through the modern Miracle Tip, L&M tastes richer, smokes cleaner, draws easier. So light up, free up, let your taste come alive. Live modern. Smoke L&M. Join us again next week for another specially transcribed story on Gunsmoke. Gunsmoke.